got the next gentleman I'm going to bring up, um, I love saying his name because he makes me, it makes me think that I'm, I'm announcing a, a night of the round table or a, a person from a concert. I mean, it's just, this is so, it's, uh, James just like, oh man. Okay. Everybody has to talk about a legacy. Today, we have none other than Deacon William B. Bryant the third. Give it up for Deacon William B. Bryant the third. Yes, indeed. Come on now, y'all. All right. All right. Churches, my memorial sometimes uses the same people over and over. We have scores of individuals who don't do anything, sometimes because they're not asked. And we recycle the same old folks. <laughs> you know, your friends, your relatives, the folks you're sick of seeing down front all the time. Don't be looking at me funny. I told you I'm getting more like my father. <laughs> Honestly, the second reason I shunned this assignment, however, it's, it's really somewhat awkward to discuss. It's, and as bad as this is going to sound, this is the best I could come up with it. I felt as though the ministers that we call sons and daughters had, in a way, walked out on us. Well, consider my position even if it seems selfish. It seemed to me that some came just long enough to get the blessing of an esteemed church, the tutelage of a wise pastor, the certificate of license or ordination with the signature of James S. Allen. And then they left. I felt a little like, I suppose, the older son in the story of the prodigal child. It just seemed to me that while some of us stayed behind, they went off into a far country. As the Lord does, however, He spoke to me. He speaks through situations. And the situation in which I found myself two days ago was in the presence of one of the sons of my memorial. He asked me, as people so often do, how's Pastor Allen? I gave him the usual answer I give anyone who asks me how Pastor Allen is. I remind them that he's a combination of the Energizer Bunny and a Timex watch. <laughs> On the one hand, the Energizer Bunny just keeps going and going and going. And the Timex watch, well, he takes a licking, but he keeps on ticking. <laughs> but this son, whom Von Moore had licensed and ordained, explained to me that he was facing a challenge in his life, a difficult decision, and said he to me, whenever I face a difficult decision, I know I have to call him Dad. Well, I knew he was referring to Pastor Allen. He reminded me when I looked askance, he is my father in the ministry. And well, my heart began to soften just a little. And the sense of sheepish embarrassment began to set in. As I considered this individual with whom I was speaking, I wondered, in his 20 years of ministry, in his union alone, I wonder how many souls have been led to Christ, how many families brought together and counseled, 
how many people witnessed to and baptized or babies blessed or other ministers licensed and sent forth. And then in my head, the exponential multiplication began. How many congregations, I wondered, across the city, across the nation, had been blessed because of individuals who went forth from by memorial. I thought as well as of others who had saved. I thought of Reverend Douglas Driver, Reverend Alfred Spinner, the late Reverend John T. Murphy, who stayed the course to help maintain a stable by memorial in the absence of a pastor. The Reverend Clifton W. Bundick, who served so faithfully as a supporter and undergirder of the under shepherd. I even wondered about some of those I never even met, like Reverend Luke Beard, Pastor Carr's good friend, who even though he moved away, came back in 1933 to lead revival. And then God did what he often does in crisis situations. His promise to bring back to remembrance what we need to know from his word came to me from Romans 10. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, for nearly 80 years now, my memorial has sent. Some of those we sent grew up right alongside us. They felt their calling as they came of age, and we watched them. We watched them grow from fellow junior ushers and youth choir members to preachers of the word. Others, it's true, came from elsewhere, but they left with my memorial stamp of approval and went forth to proclaim Christ's gospel. And still others we recognize today married into the my memorial family. We acknowledge you too, reluctantly. <laughs> but there's no record to my knowledge that the older son in the prodigal son story ever really embraced his brother who came home. I wouldn't want to be guilty of that. So today I stand to acknowledge that Vinyl Memorial embraces you, all of our sons and daughters and children-in-law. You have gone forth and multiplied in ways that we cannot imagine. And we're even mindful of the sentiment of the Apostle Paul, the idea that it really doesn't matter who planted, it really doesn't matter who watered. What matters is that God has granted the increase. And we pause to honor you for the increase in your lives and in your ministry. You have gone to places that God had preordained. Some remain behind and some now rest in glory. And some of these still labor. Today we celebrate your ministry, past, present, and future. We remember your beginnings in my memorial. We honor your calling, and today, figuratively, we bow at your feet. For how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. So as you continue to live out your lives in ministry and service, remember that as you create your legacy, we still consider you a part of my memorial's legacy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.